Hello, my name is Kishmani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishmani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 103. Day before yesterday, on day number 101, we began the notion, we began talking about the notion of rational numbers versus irrational numbers. On day number 101, the very first day in the second series of our videos from day number 101 through 200 that we're going to have, on the very first day, we discuss the notion of rational numbers versus irrational numbers. If you have not watched day number 101 and 102, it's very important that you watch those two videos first before you continue with this one, because what we're going to do with uh, what we're going to do today directly relates to what we learned in those two days. What we learned day before yesterday and yesterday was that an irrational number is something that does not end. It does not have a terminating decimal. It never ends, and it has no repeating patterns. We have to have both of those conditions. Simply not ending does not make something an irrational number. What we learned, for example, is that 1 over 3, if you were to write that in decimal, it will never end. It will never end. It will go on forever and ever. But that is not an irrational number. It is not an irrational number because even though it does not end, there clearly is a pattern. But what's even more important is that, what we learn is that, the very, very simple thing, the very simple way, the only criterion, the only rule that you have to employ to see, figure out whether a given quantity is a rational or irrational is the very fact that it can be written as a fraction. If you can write the quantity as a fraction, as one number divided by another number, but that is the that is the definition of a rational number. So if something can be written as a if something can be written as a fraction, then it will either have a terminating decimal, the decimal will end eventually, even though it may be a very long way, or it will have a repeating pattern. For example, it might be something like this: 0 0.54, 54, 54, or so on and so forth. It never ends, but it has a pattern. 54, 54, 54. It has a repeating pattern. And therefore, this quantity can be written as a fraction. We saw yesterday that it was 6 over 11, I believe. I'm going to, I'm going to quickly verify that thing because I'm going purely by my memory here. 6 divided by 11. Let's see what... Yep, 6 divided by 11 is 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4. But as you can clearly see, this is, this is a rational number for very simple fact that it can be written as a fraction. What we also learned on those two days is that most square roots square root of most numbers, most, most square roots are irrational numbers. Most square root of irrational numbers, the exception of course, exception of course would be the perfect squares. That's why they're called perfect square. For example, the square root of 25 is is 5. Square root of 25 is 5 and because 5 can be written as a fraction 5 over 1 it is a rational number. But the square root of 26 to square root of 26 is an irrational number. If you were to write that in decimal it will never end and it will have no pattern. The same is true, the same exact thing is true about most cube roots or for that matter any roots, most fourth root, fifth root, seventh root, whatever it is, unless it has to be a perfect cube or a perfect fourth power or a perfect fourth uh, fifth power, it will not be a it will not be a rational number, it will be an irrational number. Most cube roots are irrational numbers unless the exception here would be unless they happen to be perfect cubes. Unless they have to happen to be perfect cubes. For example, for example, cube root of 8, we know is 2. It's a rational number. Similarly, cube root of 3, cube root of 27 rather, cube root of 27 is 3. It's 3 because 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27. But anything that falls in between, cube root of 9, cube root of 10, cube root of 13, cube root of 17, cube root of 26, they are all irrational numbers. They will all be irrational number if you were to write them in a decimal form it will never end and there will not be any pattern. The question that we need to ask here, the question that we, that we are being asked to answer rather, the question that we are being asked to answer here is, 
what is the approximate value of cube root of 10? That has to do with directly understanding that it is an irrational number. We must understand that it's an irrational number because it's not a perfect cube. Perfect cube is 8. Perfect cube is 27. 10 is neither 8 no 27, it falls in between somewhere. Anything that falls in between, they are all, all cube roots of numbers between 8 and 27, they are going to be all irrational. And because, now that we understand that it is actually an irrational quantity, if you were to write that in decimal form, it will never end, it will have no repeating pattern. Even the most powerful computer on the planet that we have right now, or the most powerful planet that we may ever have, can never ever give you the exact value of cube root of 10. It is simply not possible. It goes on forever and ever and ever. Lucky for us, nobody is asking us to give the exact value of cube root of 10. What the question is asking is, what is the approximate value of cube root of 10? Well, let's find out, shall we? What we need to understand is that the scale that we're dealing with here goes from 8 to 10 or rather 8 to 27, 8 to 27, cube root of 8 is 2 and cube root of 27 is 3 because 10, because 10 is very close to 8, here is our 8, 9, 10, here is our 10, cube root of 10 is very, cube root of 10, 10 is very close to 8, what does it tell us? What well, that tells us that cube root of 10, even though we cannot figure out the precise value, but whatever the bloody thing is, it's got to be something very close to 2. Maybe 2.1, maybe 2.2. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to find out the approximate value of cube root of 10. It has to be either 2.1 or 2.2 or somewhere in between. Let's find out what it is, shall we? Let's find out. So what we need to do here, what we need to do here is to ask ourselves, what is 2.1 times 2.1 times 2.1? What is 2.1 times 2.1 times 2.1? Let's see if, if that's something very close to 10. Let's find out, shall we? Now, in reality, in technicality, we should actually be multiplying 2.1 by 2.1 by 2.1, but that will be very annoying, that will be very tedious, that will be very laborious. Let's not worry about the decimals right now. Let's just multiply 21 by 21. Now when I say let's multiply 21 by 21, that's exactly what I mean. We're not going to do it like a baby. We're not going to multiply it by 1 and then by 2. We're just going to simply multiply 21 by 21. Let's begin. 21 times 1, 21, 21 times 1 is 21. 1, carry 2. 21 times 2 is 44. 21 times 2 is 42. 42 plus 2 is 44. I almost made a boo boo, didn't I? That's it. Now we're going to multiply again by 21. This is where I have to slow down, I have to pay attention. 21 times 1 is 21, 1, carry 2, 21, 21 times 4, 21 times 4 is going to be 84, 84 plus 2 is 86, 6, carry 8, one more time, 21 times 4 is going to be 84, 84 plus 8, again one more time, 21 times 4 is 84, 84 plus 8 is what we have to figure out. We know 84 plus 10 should be 94. We don't have 10, we have 8. Therefore, 84 plus 8 should be not 94, but 92. And now we're going to go back and take care of our decimal. So let's do it in a different color, just because we have the flair for the dramatics. So here is our decimal, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So we have one decimal place here, one decimal place here, one decimal place here. Our decimal is right now, right here. We need to move it three places. We need to move it three places. One, two, and three. So we take our decimal, move it three places. One, two, three. It is going to end up here. What that means is that, what that means is that, if you were to take the cube root, cube root of 9.261, if somebody were to ask us what is the cube root of 9.261, it turns out that the cube root of 9.261 is exactly 2.1. Well, that's not good enough though. We want the cube root of 10. That is too far away. That is too far away. 2.1 is too small. Let's try 2.2. 2.2 times 2.1 times 2.1 times 
times 2.2, same thing. Again, we're not going to worry about decimal in the beginning. We can insert the decimal at the end. Let's just, just do 22 times 22, shall we? 22 times 2 is 44. 4, carry 4. 22 times 2 is 44. 44 plus 4 is going to be 48. Let's multiply it by 22 one more time. This is where I have to slow down. Ah, oh, let's not multiply by 22 because 22 times 8, I don't know what the hell that is. Let's do it one digit at a time. This, this time we're going to do one digit at a time. So let's multiply by 2 and then by 2. So that's very easy. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 twos are 16. 6 carry 1. 2 fours are 8 plus 1 is 9. And then again by 2 one more time. So it's going to be the same number as before. So it's going to be 8, 6 and 9. You get 8, 14, that gets 4, carry 1. 10 plus 6 is 16, 6, carry 1. And we get a 10. And now we go and take care of our decimal. That's all it is. That's all it is. So decimal is 2.2 right here, 2.2 and then 2.2. So this one is one decimal place, this one is another decimal place, this one is another decimal place. We need to move our final decimal place. We need to move our final decimal, that is, three places. Three places. One, two, and three. So our decimal is right here, right now. We need to move it three places. One, two, three. Turns out that we have, what we have here is 10.648. In other words, if somebody would ask us what is the cube root of 10.648, what is the cube root of 10.648? The answer is, it is exactly 2.2. Exactly 2.2. Now we got just the opposite problem. Now we got just the opposite problem. Here we had 9.2, 9.26, we were about 0.75 under 10. 0.75 under 10, approximately 3 quarter under 10. Here is 0.65. We are 65. 0.65 over 10. This was 0.65 over 10. This more than 10. This was 0.75 approximately under 10. We're not winning. This is a no-win situation. What should we do? They're asking for the approximate value of cube root of 10. Well, let's compromise. Let's compromise by saying that we're going to meet halfway. And let's compromise by saying that we're going to meet halfway. We're going to we're going to settle for. We're going to settle for not 2.1, not 2.1, not 2.2, but 2.15. Voila, 2.15. If you were to multiply 2.1, 2.15 times 2.15 times 2.15, you will see that that quantity is going to be very, very close to 10. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.